his introductions almost there. McCulloch capturing the championship as he did in Nagoya against the local hero. A man's backyard was a tremendous feat. I mean, it ranks not only alongside uh, Bruno and Ben's feats uh, this year, perhaps even uh, a little bit in ahead of them because he won the world Thank title where it was di most difficult to win. Tremendous yeah. performance. So, Johnny Bridell now also unbeaten, but the super flyweight he won that at eight stones three, and this is at eight stones six. The colour one of the most colourful uh, boxes now at any weight, really. Throws uh, Jim Rodenthal was saying so many punches, a little windmill quickness, and he's just developing now that professional skills as he goes along. Doesn't get hit quite so easily as he did at the start of his career. He knows how to hit and hop it, uh, Johnny Bridell. We've seen quite a bit of him, really. He's beaten a few uh, British fighters. Last time up, we had a 20-second win, but that was a total mismatch, so we can write that one off. Now, McCullough likes to throw a lot of punches, as you said, Red, but that's very difficult against a man who won't stay at peace for a second. So it's possible it could take McCullough a couple of rounds just to get close to this fellow. First time out of Scandinavia for today, and I wonder how he'll react to the atmosphere. Well, he's cleverly moving, getting on his bike right from the start there. And his speed, he could uh, pull it a tandem, really. Kallak really enjoys his boxing. Well, those uh, almost rags to riches stories, isn't it? Uh, with Wayne McCulloch now got a nice home in Las Vegas where it may even uh, stay domiciled, we don't know yet. He's just pinching the punch of Tula Dane, though, Jim, isn't he? Yes, he, he's, this is what you'd expect, and I'm sure Wayne McCulloch's expecting exactly the same thing. He's going to find it difficult to get close, especially the first couple of rounds. And uh, Bridal is certainly picking him with the jab, landing slightly more punches. But then McCulloch now looking the more positive. He's not known Bridal is certainly the greatest puncher at his weight. Only 9 out of 26 stoppages or KOs. And his brother actually, Jimmy, were world champions at the same time, which is a bit of a record. McCullough's getting nice and close. He's finding it difficult just to get his punches off in the first round here, but he's getting close. He's getting his feet up close, and that's the main thing, really. Yeah, he, he'll trot him down. He's trying to cut the corners here now. And he's walking on to the right hand. Second round, then. And, uh, well, the unlikely event, in my opinion, of going 12, we've got French, Italian and uh, American judges and Mexican referee. But uh, no matter about the quality of opposition or the difference in weights with Bridal to be unbeaten, you can't knock that. The job is definitely going to be the, the biggest problem for McCullough. McCullough standing off just a little bit at the beginning of the second round. He can't afford to do that. That's an accurate and it's a quick jab. And as soon as it's been thrown, Vidal is backing right out of there. Yeah, he won't slow down Vidal unless he's getting hit, Jim. Now, Wayne has to concentrate and get his feet up a little bit closer so that he can throw bunches of punches. From a distance, he'll only throw one, and Breed Al will be out of range. See, you saw that there. A single lead is no good against this fellow. He's going to have to spend the first couple of rounds getting his feet a little bit closer so that he can let punches go. Miss with the first couple, but land with the next couple. Now, McCulloch, you can bet he's studied uh, some tapes of Bridal in action. Very thorough in everything he does, actually. See, Breed was just popping with the jab, but then that little right hand coming down. But the main thing is, he's making McCulloch miss. 
So I suppose in punches landed, he's looking just to, to steal the first couple of rounds without any heroics. Referee trying to keep clear of it all and almost out of the picture. Look, he nearly got trapped by that one. Big fella moving around with these uh, phantom weights. Maybe an idea for McCullough to work the body for a couple of rounds. The head is very, very shifty, and this fellow is very quick. So go, go for the body. They can't get the body. That's a good shot for McCullough. Whenever he pins him, he has to get the punches flowing. He's just stalking him, isn't he? He's the hunter looking for the prey there. Well, this is really the start that we expected. Nothing alarming, the fact that McCulloch hasn't pinned him down yet. So there you go, go to the body. Now, finally, McCulloch getting close. Yeah, it's started to reach him now, trying to bring those uh, hands down and slow the legs down, really. Is it gutsy enough to Brito? I saw him quite a bit as an amateur. <laughs> Round three. So the chase resumed here. Smart boxing by the, the Dane, no question. That was the, the only way he could do. He can't stand and trade right away with this fellow. He's, you know, the amount of punches he throws if he can get to you. This, I think this is the first sort of shadow that he's ever had to try and catch. See, this is the worst kind of opponent for McCullough because he likes to set a rhythm and let the punches flow, and you can't do that against a fellow who's just flying all over the place. He's almost having to run across him to cut the ring size down there, isn't he, Jim, the champion? Yeah, but he's getting that little bit closer. He yep, finished the, the second half of the second round. He started cutting the range down. Yeah, he's, he's beginning to sniff it a little bit now that he's getting nearer. Oh. Right, that right hand is connected. Who knows? Yeah, he's beginning to intimidate Breedal a little bit more yep. now. And he's walking onto the right hand. He's going clockwise. Yeah, McCulloch will be quite happy the way things are going in this round. See, Bre Bredel always wants to clinch when they're up close. He just wants to get on his bike and pop from long range, but he can't do that for 12 rounds. He's obviously done it for 26 fights, Jim, but not against this caliber of opposition. I mean, we have to give him full credit, Reg. He's a, he's a class act, he's undefeated. And you could see at the start before the fight began, he wasn't intimidated, he never took his eyes off the McCullough. And he's doing exactly as he planned to do, just keep on the move. But McCullough getting that little bit closer now. Just the volume of punches that uh, McCulloch sinks in there and slows opponents down. He certainly outfought the Japanese. First word we've had from the Mexican referee. The main thing is McCulloch is pressurising Bredal, not allowing him to set his own pace. That in itself will take some of the steam out of him. That was one of the stiffest jabs he's Teddy did now. He's trying to get the, get the range. The old-fashioned one, too, the left-hand lead and the right-hand cross there by McCulloch. And the, the last ten seconds then of round three. Four. Fourth round. And now it looks as though the Irish champion now just closing down all the time on Bridal, but just... He's still a smart mover. It's going to take more punishing punches, I think, from McCulloch to really slow this fellow down. He won the championship of Superfly against a Mexican. 
but he's always had uh, he's always had the home uh, advantages. And there's uh, we got it level there, Jim Watts unofficial. It's those pecking punches counting early on there for Johnny Bradell. The only band of his kind in the world, the Dane Jim, that's got this sort of perpetual movement the whole time. I can't think of anybody else that boxes like him, except his brother. Yeah, and I think he's exaggerating it tonight because he knows he can't trade with McCulloch. He has to keep on the move and pop. I mean, his punches are not of the highest quality, but he's popping again with the jab, and McCulloch hasn't really picked up where he left off at the end of the third. He's just standing off. This is better. He has to get close. He's been standing off for the first minute of this round, and that's allowing Vidal to, to pop away with the jab. He has to get right on top of this fellow. Keeps his head so high, doesn't he, Bradell? But he, in other words, he uses the height to his advantage, really. If he starts stooping, he'll get caught a lot easier. McCulloch so. standing off a little bit too much here, Reggie. He's allowing Breed out to dictate the pace here, and that's the last thing. He has to really put him under pressure as he was doing in the third round. Got his own jab going there, McCulloch. It's I don't think difficult jab... to outreach him, yeah, that's right. He won't be able to. I, I don't think. think jab's a punch here. He has to get his feet a little bit closer and let punches flow like he's doing here. Just get his feet a little bit closer, but he's been standing off too much in this round. See how he shook his head then, Jim uh, McCulloch, was he's looking down at us almost there above the concrete position when he'd missed with a punch. He didn't like that. A little sign of frustration, but that's the last thing you want because that's this fellow's game. He's trying to frustrate you, make you become a little bit ragged. But McCulloch, not the same pressure here as we saw in the third round. Oh, that's the best right hand he's landed so far. Ten seconds now, the end of the round. Do you think it's a little bit too late in the round here? Goodbye. And we're into round five then of this WBC Bantamweight Championship of the World. Eight stone six or 53 kilo and the defending champion. First defence then for Wayne McCulloch of Belfast. He's travelled all around the world now. He's really done his apprenticeship in the pro ring, this fellow. Japan, Las Vegas, Atlantic City, Omaha, California, Philadelphia. He's done it all, New York State. Wayne is still just standing off a little bit too far. He's trying to box his way in. I think he wants to think about getting his feet closer and just let punches flow. You don't want to trade single jabs with this fellow. At this stage of the fight, it's no use uh, McCulloch thinking, oh, come on, stand still, I want to hit you. I mean, this, this fellow's come to survive and win if he can. Yeah, and uh, McCulloch is allowing Bredal to work at his own pace. Bredal is quite happy with this pace. He's got room to move, McCulloch is standing off, so he's getting a chance to, to pop. But these punches are not really quality punches. But unless McCulloch is coming back with better, he's going to be losing the rounds. what he wants to do, bury those punches in close. And just a little warning from the ref to uh, Bridal, don't, don't hold on, but you can't say I blame him. Well, that's Bridal's plan, work along, he's a good right hand from McCullough. Oh, they saw that one at the back of the hall. Bridal was the only one who didn't see that coming. They took it well, and McCullough not able to follow it up. Crowd getting right behind uh, McCulloch now. Every time he lands a telling sort of a blow, they, they raise their voice, obviously. But it's, it's going more or less as we thought, Jim, didn't it? That 
He would have trouble finding this fellow. Yep, you don't expect McCullough to his best work to be in the first half of the fight, but he must keep this fellow under pressure and draw some of the, the steam out of him. This is what he must do, keep that, stay right on him. This is exactly what's required here. That's the best burst, burst of punches that he's had. That's quite a salvo, that lot. He must stay there. Not necessarily a one-punch hitter in the colour, it's the amount of punches, the accumulation that uh, counts with him. Well, that was a certain round six. Now is uh, McCulloch going to carry on where he left off in the fifth? I think McCulloch really has to take a few more chances. He's trying to, to box his way into this fella and it's not very easy, so he's just going to have to take some chances, maybe get caught as he moves in, but get the punches flowing and just out-punch this fellow, out-work him. Well, he's got quite a think tank in his corner there with the Americans, Wayne McCulloch, so if they can't tell him, nobody can. But then he thinks he's on fight as well, he studies the game. But there was the chances you were talking about there, Jim, he took a left hook there, but still march forward. Well, this is what he has to do, if he has to take a punch to get in, then fair enough, just make sure he throws three or four once he gets there. Can't box this fellow from the outside. Well, there's, there's uh, the unofficial again, as I say, there's judges from France, Italy, Texas may not agree with that, but that's how Jim's got it so far. You don't have to like what Bridal's doing to say in a couple of rounds he's been effective. McCulloch's certainly getting closer now. McCulloch wants to get his hands up a little bit more too. Yeah, he's, try he's trying to faint his way in a little bit there, isn't he? Try and make a little lead to him. This is better pressure now from McCulloch. McCulloch has been leaving it to the, the last minute of the round, which is not a good idea, but he's picked the pace up right from the start here. Well, this is far better work from McCulloch now. No, that's not no, right. No, that's no quite rightly there, the referee slipped there. He's trod on the hand of a judge, actually. Now Bedell knows that he's got to take some stick there. He can't get away from all of this. He's pounding into the ribs, McCulloch. Yeah, this is far better stuff now from Wayne McCulloch. This is what we expect to see. Just total commitment. He won't be denied though today, will he, Jim? Well, no, as we said, Reg, he's unbeaten. He's a former world champion who didn't lose his title. Oh, this he's... is where McCullough takes over. Use his strength. He gets easily rattled in the corner there, though, Bedell. Oh, yeah, he's piling in. He's really taking over. See, now he's got that much closer than he's been looking for. I tell you, though. Be a lot grittier than some people think. Round seven. Just a reminder then, WBC version, bantamweight championship of the world, and the Irishman, Wayne McCulloch, first offence, having won it, uh, well, supposedly with a split decision in the Goya against uh, the local hero. And in fact, the two American judges made him a clear winner, and only the Korean was sitting on the fence with a draw. So there's uh, Jim's card again now, one up from the card. American judges, Jim, and there's only one in the three here. They, they, they do go on aggression a lot, the man who's going forward, don't they? Maybe they've got to McCulloch up to two rounds. Been kind of bit to, to Bradle for the punches landed in the first couple of rounds. I mean, he was making McCulloch miss. McCulloch wasn't coming back with decent punches, and he was being picked off. Not not quality jabs, but still scoring punches. But I think McCulloch will be pretty happy 
being even slightly in front at the halfway stage. Oh, he led with the right hand, got away with it. Not supposed to do that, scored it with the textbook. But if you're good enough, you can do it. He has constant pressure now from McCullough. This is what we expected, and this is what we're now getting. Which is a gritty day. performance, Reg. Oh, absolutely gritty stuff. He, he, he must have trained hard for this one, Bridal. Well, we, we spoke about Bridal being a non-puncher, but you normally find the non-punchers are in the peak of condition because they have to be. They know fights are going to go the 12 rounds. And that's the case here, but McCullough really looking impressive now. Almost like an irritating gnat, isn't he? The way he moves around there, but they're flicking out punches. Well, well the crowd is sensing it, but McCulloch's still got to prove it. No signs of, of, of weakness or flagging in Bridal's work. The pressure beginning to get to him a little bit, but he's still coping with it well, although McCullough certainly moved into the driver's seat. Defiant though, jo Johnny Bridal. He's, he's got a bit of the champion's heart there. When he misses with a punch, he must follow up on it because he'll catch him with the next one or the next one again. Round eight. And there's certainly some pace, and uh, McCulloch has had to chase this challenger all the way around. He pulls his head back there slightly as he gets hit and takes a little bit of sting out of some of those uh, McCulloch punches. It's a good left hook there from McCulloch, bang on the chin, but Vidal took it well. And a triple jab from McCulloch, now that, that's the plan, single punches are no good against this fellow. Couple of points in it, and uh, well, that's the way I see it as well. I often uh, disagree with Jim's card. Now and again, we have a lot of stuff, but not much. McCulloch still finding it difficult to get the powerful punches home. So he's, he's doing the next best thing, he's outworking the challenger. Just keeping him under pressure and trying to outwork him. Trying to move both ways now, but he's been going to his own left onto McCulloch's right. Now you see that he's gone back again the other way. That's about time. I, I wondered if he changed that tactic. You now just a little bit negative uh, for too much of the time now. I mean, if he would step in behind his jab now and again, he'd maybe give him himself a better chance. But he's always moving back, so his punches have no power whatsoever. He's going to warn him about touching the ropes, so I think. Oh, no, I don't believe that one. Terrible. No, he was not entirely stopping at that point, the Mexican referee, in the eighth round. Nothing like controversy in the fight game. But, Jim, I mean, I know he's taken the punches and we're not, but, but you have, so that you know what it's about. That was a terrible decision, Reg. I mean, look at Vidal. He's as clear as a bell. He's been pinned on the ropes before. He doesn't trade with... What's the point trading with McCullough? He knows he can't do it, so he covers up, lets McCullough for the burst. Then he goes back on his bike again. That's a terrible decision from the referee. Delighted for Wayne McCulloch, but he was going to keep his title anyway. He was in the driver's seat, he was staying there. But that was a terrible decision, I feel, from the referee. Uh, I'm, I'm always one of those people who thought, well, compassionate ends and uh, sooner rather than later. Obviously, I'm on the referee's side when they stop it. But there, there didn't seem any real reason for that. As you say, Jim, it was inevitable at that stage, surely. The time of 1 minute 55 seconds in round. At number eight, a referee in charge stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, and still the WBC Battle of the World, the Pocket Rocket winning the Pocket. 
fast as Breedle. Uh, first of all, you were going to win that fight, but should it really have been stopped at that stage? Well, I wanted to knock the guy clean out. But the referee told him about 30 seconds before the end of the fight, he told him to fight, and he didn't fight, and he just kept running. So the referee was going to stop it. I knew he was going to stop it. He told him to fight, and he wouldn't fight. Well, you, you certainly caught up with him. Riedel told me after the fight that he, he wanted to survive the distance. I told him the referee wanted him to try and win, but he didn't want to do that. OK, now, he gave you a few problems in catching up with him early on, and then yeah. you tracked him down. It took me a few rounds to get into the body. I was trying to work the body in. I was actually just getting warmed up in the seventh, eighth round. I was starting to get to him, starting to get him punches more solid. And uh, as I say, I wanted them to be more impressive and stop the guy. But This is the end. But he, the guy didn't want to win. He just wanted to run, Luke. Didn't want to win. He's a light puncher, actually, so he was never really going to hurt you tonight. But you don't worry about defense, do you? Well, I'm trying to, if you see, I'm tipping my head more and trying to hit, hit up here. Because the guy will break his hand on top of my head, and I won't get knocked out. He'll get knocked out if you get hit in the chin. So that's what we're learning, to keep my head down and hit the crown of the head. Please with your performance tonight. Please, but could, could be better, but I didn't expect Riedel to run as, as bad as he did. But uh, he didn't want to win, and I've, I've just wanted the hometown fans to get a good fight. OK, here's your manager, Matt Tinley. What's next? Let's talk about Dublin in February and maybe moving up a weight to Daniel Zaragoza, the new WBC Super Bantamweight champion. Well, we're talking to Zaragoza. Uh, we're going to fight in Dublin probably in February here on ITV. We're really pleased about that. Uh, there's a couple opponents under consideration, perhaps Jose Luis Bueno, former world champion, uh, very hard puncher, one four-round knockout tonight. Okay, we're delighted to have him on ITV. Well done, lads.